Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Hope you guys are having an awesome Friday night out there. Great start to your weekend. Hope you all had an awesome Thanksgiving. Uh, if you're just tuning in from, you know, over the last couple days and uh, definitely wishing you guys uh, some happy holidays out there and hope you guys had an awesome day yesterday. Um, but uh, just like I mentioned in yesterday's, well, this morning's video, uh, this video tonight was going to be a big video. We're going to be discussing two topics and uh, each topic is going to probably take up uh, the first half and then the second half of the video. The first half, we're going to discuss the potential for a big severe weather event next week. Uh, really specifically talking about Tuesday, this could um, uh, really be just your classic secondary severe weather season event. We really need to talk about what we know with this. And of course, um, this is really trying to target areas of the deep south, maybe Mississippi Valley. And we're going to try to figure out what we do know. It's just a classic setup. And a lot of a lot of dynamics are coming together uh, that really point to some kind of severe weather episode. So we're going to talk about that. And then in the second half of the video, we're going to discuss what we know about a chunk of December, a chunk as in maybe into the first uh, seven to ten days of December, uh, between now and the first seven or ten days of December, which would be you know one third of December, if you will. So. You know, we're, we're transitioning from what I always consider the last fall month of the year, which is November, into um, uh, the first winter month of the year, which is December, it being December, January, and February. So I think it's important to try to figure out, hey, are we going to see any snow around the holidays? What are we going to see? Um, what is the pattern going to look like for, for basically the entire country? I'm not just going to talk about the central and eastern U.S. I'm talking about the, the western U.S. also. I'm going to get kind of nerdy with you guys. So stay with me here if, you, if you're interested. Um, if you guys have not subscribed, always consider hitting that subscribe button for me. Like the video if you like it. You guys got anything that I can pray about, pray over. Always put those in the comments so I can pray over it and so others can too. If you all see a cat move behind me, um, one of the cats uh, that I have uh, decided it just wanted to chill on the, on, the, on the bed and I just didn't have the heart to... Uh, to move it. She was very comfortable. So she's laying on that cover right behind me that you see directly behind my head. So if you see any movement, it's just a cat. Just ignore it or watch it. Either one. Um, so let's start this off by talking about the severe weather event. This is big. This is day five. This is this coming Tuesday, November the 29th, the morning of November 29th into the morning of November 30th, which is our last day of November, we have a 30% risk of severe weather occurring at 25 miles in any given location. Guys, that's basically an enhanced risk at day five. That's, that's, a, that's a big deal, it really is. An enhanced risk, by the way, if you don't know, that's a level three out of five in the severe weather legend or scale, whatever you wanna call it. And then you got a huge 15% risk stretching all the way to, um, you know, well north of Memphis, all the way down to Houston, Texas. And that is basically a slight risk of severe weather, level two out of five, at day five. That is a big deal, guys. So what's driving this is a big trough, normally what always drives this, digs into the western U.S. and uh, yanks up some of the dynamics needed for severe weather. So we'll look at the precipitation map first on this. So stick with me. We're going to look at all the things driving this. So what happens here is we're getting into next Tuesday. We're Tuesday morning at this point. Already upper trough digging into the region, and already you got a surface low, pretty strong one, a sub 1000 millibar low pressure one shooting across the middle of the country. There's basically an avenue, a storm tracking area right here where there's a gradient between pretty cold air in the northern plains and the northwest and a warm moist air to the south and southeast. So a surface low rides the boundary of this upper trough, and with this. Um, we're getting into uh, Tuesday morning. With this, you're going to have a spike of severe weather down here. This might be a little hard to see on your screen, but we don't know the specifics. We don't know what the storm mode is going to be. Are these going to be supercells? Is this going to be a big wind threat? Is, the, is this going to be a linear kind of mode where we have a line of severe thunderstorms? What are we going to have? We don't know. So, you know, I know you're thinking, why don't you get a little bit closer for me? And I will here in a second, but just know that we don't know specifics. We got to get into the short range. But what we do know is things are coming together dynamic wise for a severe weather event across the western deep south for sure in the Mississippi Valley. Surface low riding this boundary up here, snow to the north. This might be a, a decent, maybe, maybe a bigger event, maybe some snow for areas of uh, Minneapolis and just areas of Minnesota in general. Could be a snow event for Denver, Colorado. This moves through 
And then we, you know, got to turn around and watch Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. And then maybe watch Wednesday for some severe weather across the southeast. But this is a cold front digging in. And then this will cool a lot of people down who will be warm for the next several days. So what does this mean? And looking at pivotal weather, guys, it's going to do that a couple times. It'll, it'll be just blank on me. Just give it about two or three seconds and it'll come through. So uh, this is the upper wind pattern at 500 millibars, several, several thousand feet up in the air. And this moves in. At this point, um, it's a positively tilted trough. And we already have that surface low riding this right here. Um, does it ever become negatively tilted? Uh, probably not. But this is a digging trough. And when this happens and you have a piece of energy that flies through it, it helps yank up low-level moisture. And just the upper trough in general helps yank up low-level moisture. And you got winds. You see these wind barbs pointing this way. That's winds coming out the um that's winds basically coming out the southwest and then you're going to have a low level jet which is going to be pulling let's see if we can get it to it so we're going to have a low level jet which is going to be pulling winds out more of the south but still that southwest uh, direction but a little bit more south right into here so you're basically going to have uh, competing wind directions at different levels of the atmosphere and as we've talked that creates a spin to the atmosphere so there's going to be a pretty stout low level jet where does this set up where does basically the best dynamics overlap you got kinematics and you got thermodynamics kinematics is basically the wind energy driving severe weather thermodynamics is basically that low level moisture high how high are the dew points um how high is the surface temperatures what you feel when you walk outside how um and how high is the cape, the convective available potential in the atmosphere, the, the, basically the storm juice in the atmosphere. And basically, that rises a lot depending on how, how much low-level moisture is in the atmosphere, which with this setup, there could be a lot. So if we look at dew points and how this trough and this surface load yanks up, here we go. We'll stop this. This is around Tuesday morning. Dew points rising into the 70s in Houston. Uh, southeast and basically eastern Texas, you got dew points well into the 60s. These spike almost into the 70s into Louisiana. So what we call this is a moist sector. And what we call this is very dry air. So you have two boundaries right up against each other. And normally, in a lot of cases, when you have a very moist atmosphere next to a dry atmosphere, normally you're having two different atmospheres clashing and normally that spells severe weather and that'll be the case it'll be a moving moist sector um, and you know you're going to have a chance for severe weather in this moist sector there's going to be dew points well into the 60s potentially 70s and with these high-end dew points yes one thing that you you pay attention to if i go back and look at this um your you know your surface low is pretty far north so one thing that you might have a limiting factor is lack of forcing when a low pressure is so far north, sometimes you have a lack of lift to create some convective energy. So even though if we you know, flip it back to this, we have some pretty high-end cape levels at the mid-levels. And, and uh, Houston, you know, getting into Tuesday morning um, or Tuesday about midday, that does not necessarily mean you're going to see storms just because your low pressure is so far north. But um, that, not, that might not mean anything. It really not. It really might not. But... Uh, these cape levels really start to get to 1,000, maybe 1,500 joules per kilogram. And you mix that with the low-level moisture, with the kinematics, the wind energy, this low-level jet. And this is why you have the overlapping best dynamics here for some kind of severe weather event right into here. And that's why you have that 30% risk. Um, you, get, you know, severe weather, guys, trust me, it's one thing that I like that I talk that I dislike talking about the most when it comes to weather. I don't like it, especially, especially in the holiday season. I just, it just, I'm not a fan of it. I must be rather, I much rather be talking about a big time winter storm. Um, but you know, it's weather. It doesn't matter what we like or not like, you know, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And unfortunately this is secondary severe weather season, especially in the South. So we're going to be dealing with this. So, you know, one thing you look at here is uh, surface temperatures. How warm does the atmosphere actually get down there at the surface? Well, it could be, you could get some 80 degree readings down here in Texas, well into the 70s into Louisiana. And then look at this Arctic front right here, um, where you have a pretty tight boundary of temperatures right in the middle of the country next Tuesday afternoon and evening. So, 
Um, certainly, certainly going to have dynamics for a severe weather event. And listen, you know, don't take this lightly, guy. Um, don't take don't take this as not that big of a deal. Is what I'm trying to say. That's a 30% risk at day five. That's that's pretty uncommon, especially in the fall. Okay, so so please take this serious if you're in Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi. Even keep your eye on in Tennessee and Alabama, guys. I'm telling you, we'll know about more about this each day we get closer. But as soon as we get inside about 84 hours, 80 to uh, 60 to 80 hours, we'll know a lot more. So let's go on and talk about what we know going into December. So this is the 6 to 10 day temperature outlook. It takes us from the 1st of December to the 5th. Above average temperatures uh, likely um, will, you know, have a ha has a higher potential of happening in the southeast. I really think we're probably going to have above average temperatures to kick off December, which is very depressing to me because I, I just to me I, I would take I would sacrifice the entire rest of winter for a cold and wintry December just to enhance the Christmas mood. You you know guys, I've already talked about this. I'm telling you out west and the northern plains, you guys are going to get quite chilly. It's going to chill back down for you guys. And I'm going to talk about why here in a second, so stick with me. And then there's going to be some sort of dividing gradient where basically in this area right here, you're going to have a, an active storm track right here. So with that, you're going to have chances for heavy rain, storm systems, snow up here, um, and then maybe some severe weather events uh, down here. Let's hope not. Except, you know, it's looking likely next week. We go into the 3rd to the 9th of December. This is taking us almost through one third of December, almost. Above average temperatures still predicted for the southeast and even all the way up into southern New England. And it just looks like you guys are going to have a cold start to December for the northwest and the west in general in the northern plains and even in the middle of the country. And then, you know, same thing, an active storm track right in the middle of the country. So... Let's talk about a couple things, and, and, and this is going to confuse some people, and I'm going to try to slow down and explain it the best way I can. So let's start this off by next week. So like we've always talked about, the blue you see on the map and just the colder colors, that indicates troughing, and then maybe some kind of low pressure, a cutoff low, upper trough, whatever it may be. Um, the red, the more warmer colors you see on the map, like up here near Alaska, that indicates ridging. It's very important. Ridging normally gives you above average temperatures. So when you have ridging and up towards Alaska, we call that a negative EPO. I'll tell you what that stands for here in a second. So what that allows for is an avenue of cold air basically to come from the Arctic and to potentially unload into the U.S. Now, a negative EPO is good for people who like cold weather, but it all depends on what part of the country you live in. So do you have a negative EPO and also a negative PNA, or do you have a negative EPO, which is ridging in Alaska, or a positive PNA? So a negative PNA with a negative EPO <laughs> allows basically for what you see on this map to happen. It allows for the cold air to come from the Arctic and drop into the western U.S. A positive PNA with a negative EPO allows basically when you hear the term positive PNA, a plus signal in PNA, you basically have ridging in the west and then troughing in the east. So this ridging and basically the negative EPO, this ridging into Alaska, would probably need to be pushed a little bit further eastward. So in this kind of area, you got more of a negative EPO, a little bit more into western areas of Alaska and just the straight area right here between Alaska and Russia. So in general, with this negative PNA, this allows for troughing in the west and ridging in the east. And it allows for the southeast ridge, which for winter weather fans in the eastern U.S., it's the dreaded torch. It allows for the ridge to flex in the east. So this is why in the southeast you are predicted to have above average temperatures. So what happens? How does the pattern unfold? Well, 
you know, with a negative EPO, you are still going to have cold air that tries to kind of ooze east. But how often does it do it? How far south does it dig? Well, with that severe weather event that could potentially happen next week, this is going to allow for a trough to make it into the east. But how far south does it dig? Does it dig really far into the southeast? And this is getting into, like I said, you see one DEC, stands for December 1st. How far south does that dig into the southeast? To me, with this kind of setup that you see right here, this is more favors cold in the northwest and then potentially an active storm track into the Great Lakes region northeast. But we move this out the way, and here it is. It, it, the same pattern reloads as we get into December 3rd, 4th, uh, 2nd time frame. You still got ridging up into Alaska, which is keeping Alaska above average temperature-wise, but the cold air is dumping to the west. And this is actually dumping so far to the west, it's just really into the northwest. So this allow allows for basically not only ridging for the southeast, but ridging for the south too. So then the south could warm up. But, but guys, some, some things indicate that we could have a flip around mid-December or maybe the second week, the week of December, but that is pretty far out. And the reason is, is because would you, what happens here is we have something called a negative NAO, which basically you see this red over Greenland. When you have blocking over Greenland, it allows for sometimes an active storm track on the eastern U.S. You combine that with some cold air, you could have some kind of east coast winter storm. But, you know, we're starting to get 10 days out, kind of far out. And really, you don't have great troughing. You got a lot of cold air right up here in Canada that would actually probably favor um, maybe the northeast. But the but in the southeast or the mid-Atlantic, you could probably forget about it. But it's pretty far out. So one thing you can I can tell you is a lot of cold air is building into Canada. Does this eventually release into the eastern U.S.? We don't know. But this is starting to get into the ninth, the tenth time frame. And do we finally get rid of the negative PNA, basically the southeast ridge? So I hope that makes sense. Just, just think of it like this. When Alaska is warm, then normally cold air is getting dumped into the lower 48, which is what we call this entire region down here. But where does it dump? Does it dump in the western U.S.? Does it dump in the eastern U.S. or somewhere in the middle? If you guys remember, for you folks in, in areas of the western deep south, Texas, with the massive, crazy Arctic pattern you guys got down there in February of 2021 that killed a lot of people. It was a terrible event, and it brought basically the Arctic tundra down to Texas. What caused that was basically blocking in Alaska unleashed a ton of cold air into the uh, lower 48. But it released so much into the middle of the country that it calls for the southeast ridge to actually buckle up. So areas like Georgia, the Carolinas, you guys didn't get anything out of this. We didn't get nothing. Um, but, you know, the south central U.S., the, the central part of the country absolutely froze. And it just happens like that. So what you're looking at here is, is what I was just talking about, the EPO. So it's called the East Pacific Oscillation. So basically, it's starting off today. And basically, if this line goes over this a zero line right here, it's negative. So this tells us that the EPO through about the 10th of December is going to remain relatively negative. That's, that's good news for really anybody in the lower 48 who wants some cold air, wants a chance of snow. But we go to the next panel. This takes us to the 10th of December. This is called the Pacific North American Pattern, PNA, which is what I just talked to you about. Notice this stays negative also. So that favors a dump, the dump of cold air into the west, not the east. And remember I told you a positive PNA means ridging in the west and troughing in the east. A negative PNA means the opposite. So through the 10th of December, this looks like it starts to, to, to inch close, closer to maybe a neutral ground or maybe going positive. 
but it's still negative through the entire range based off the EPS, which is a very reliable thing. Now, a, a, a kind of a secondary or third thing, which really it's it's pointless to pay attention to this and unless you got the other two working, is basically the, the North Atlantic Oscillation. A lot of people talk about this, and you really need this to cooperate um, when you're looking for a big old nor'eastern or a massive winter storm, especially in the northeast. Or really, the, the entire eastern U.S. in general. It's blocking in Greenland, allows for blocking into basically southeast Canada, eastern areas of Canada, and allows for storm systems to ride directly up the eastern U.S. instead of just kind of heading out to sea. So it stays negative. So, it, you know, it's barely negative right now, but it goes really negative as we get into the first 10 days of December. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. What I can tell you is, as we go throughout the entire duration of the Euro, here comes our first system next week that's going to promote severe weather across the Deep South. This brings a lot of rain for the, for the Northeast. Cold shot behind it. What happens after that? This starts to get into the long range. Here comes a system that fr flies, ac fries, flies across the northern plains, north central U.S. And then what happens after that? You know, we, we don't know. Um, if you look at the last panel, it looks like the cold air is kind of seeping south with a little bit of energy right here. But that's 10 days out. It's very hard to take serious. Very hard. You know, you look at the, the latest GFS. What does it show? Um, here comes that system that I just talked about with a severe weather event that moves through. And then we wait for our next system, which we know absolutely nothing about. Um, here it is, you know, brings more so just snow for the for the northern areas where the cold air is really locked in. At this point, we're getting 10 days out, guys. Very unreliable time frame. But, you know, if you start looking at past 10 days, December 6th, 7th time frame, it looks like some cold air begins to drop down a little bit deeper into the Ohio Valley northeast. But, you know, if you look at the very last frame, you see a little pink show up in North Carolina. So, uh, you know, basically what I can tell you is cold air is coming. If you look at this right here, um, well below average temperatures, about to ooze into the Pacific Northwest and the Western U.S. in general. Above average temperatures likely to probably dominate the Eastern U.S. You got a front that's going to move through, probably cool us back down for the very first day of December. And then I think it warms right back up. Cold air reloads for the Northwest. And then I think that ridging starts to take over basically for the eastern to the southeast uh, to the southern area, the southern plains down here. And I think the cold air remains to the north and the warm air remains to the south. And then we have to just watch to see when we beat down this ridging and we can get back to more of a wintry pattern. And if we go all the way out to December 10th, it looks like we start to cool back down. But guys, that's 360 hours out. It's very hard to take serious. So... I'll leave you with this, guys. Um, and I hope that made sense. And I and I, and I pray that, and I hope that um, people tuned in for the majority of that video because um, uh, I feel like I explained it about the best I could. But I'll leave you with this. Just know that. Let's just hope that if you're a winter weather fan, and I know not everybody on here is, but I am. I'm speaking for myself. All we can do is hope that you know that. We sacrifice one part of December at the beginning, and then all of a sudden we have a mid-month flip. And then we maybe for the eastern U.S., suddenly we can flip to a colder, wintry pattern right around Christmas time. That's all, I, that's all I can see. But I can tell you, I can tell you guys, we have sacrificed December as a winter, winter month in the eastern and central U.S. as of late. I mean, it is. it just seems like we cannot get cold weather in December. I don't know why that... The last one that I vividly remember, honestly, is like 2010 for, for the Southeast. And, and most people in the Southeast know what happened in 2010. We had, um, you know, the, the big winter storm on, on Christmas Eve, Christmas, and then the day after Christmas. And it was just a fun pattern. But it seems like we can never get a pattern like that anymore. But anyways, um, that's all I got, guys. 25-minute video. Thank you all for tuning in. Y'all have a great start to your weekend, and I'll be with you guys tomorrow morning. God bless.